Hello, welcome to today's episode of Juicing the Numbers, your statistics and sports podcast. I am your host, Joshua Tracy. And I am Corbin Hiller. And if my audio sounds worse yet again, it's because I'm once again without a microphone today, as I am off at places that are in my house, and y'all don't need to know where I am. Mind your own business. Fuck you. <laughs> uh, yeah, we're gonna... So we, we did the NFL version of this one already, and we did NFL all-fun team for 2019 and all-time. Today we're going to do the MLB version of that, as well as talk about some combine results and some general football stuff. Sound good to you, Corwin? Absolutely. All right. Uh, where do you want to start? Um, let's start with the all-fun team. All right. All right. So, once again, let me ask you, Corwin, how did you decide, uh, how did you define the word fun? So basically, if I was a fan of this team, like we discussed uh, briefly in the past episode, who would be the most fun player at any given position um, mixing just raw talent? Like, are they a good player? And how fun is the talent that they have? So let me think. A guy like uh, Michael Brantley in the outfield, really good player. Not, you know, not a consensus all-star every year, but is always in the running, but not necessarily the most exciting guy. Very well. I kind of went with more, you know, raw excitement, you know, crazy defense, long home runs, um, personality, uh, you know, filters in here. So it's going to be a lot of top players, um, but hopefully fun top players. Yeah, I'd, I'd say I went with, an, with a similar conversation here. Mine's definitely full of um, dudes who are good, but chosen for specific aspects of why they're good. And some dudes who are just in weird statistical categories. Mm-hmm. So, uh, ooh, I didn't even notice, but I don't think I picked a single Yankee. So look at that. No bias Josh is back in town. I don't have a single pirate. And that's well, not that's because uh, of bias. That's because they fucking suck. <laughs> uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, we, let, 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 let's get started. Um, uh, I, I have mine starting at catcher. You want to start with catcher? Let's start a catcher. All right. Um, I have for catcher, uh, JT Real Muto. Ooh. So I'm not sure if you're aware of this, but JT Real Muto uh, is the only catcher in baseball last year to have three or more triples and uh, nine stolen bases. <laughs> that is fun. So JT Real Muto hit three triples and nine stole nine bags. In addition to, you know, like... Batting 275, 328, 493 for an 820 OPS. Like, who cares about that? But, excuse me. Like, who cares about his 25 home runs and 36 doubles? I am concerned with his three triples and nine stolen bases. <laughs> this is very important stuff that he's doing. And oh, he has therefore made my 2019 all fun team. Um, yeah, so. I applaud you for picking uh, a fun player like JT Romuto, um, but that was the wrong choice. Uh, the correct choice at catcher is, in fact, Williams Astadio. Oh, that's a great choice. Who, uh, despite not having uh, any triples or stolen bases uh, and just having an all-around worse stat line, uh, not even playing as much, not having nearly as good defense, uh, there is no question, if you are watching a baseball game, you want to see Williams Astodio run those bases. You want to see him just doing every possible athletic feat you can because he is one of the most exciting players on the field anytime he is on the field. Uh, despite having a 79 OPS plus and negative 0.2 war. No, he, yeah, that, <laughs> I didn't realize he it was that bad. the captain of the all-fun team. He is, uh, has the highest or second highest contact rate in all of baseball. He never walks. He never strikes out. 
and he never misses when he swings. He is uh, definitely a fun player to watch. El Tortuga. The Tortoise. Big fan. Big fan. Excellent choice. Uh, moving on to first base, I have a tie. Um, Albert Pujols and Joey Votto. So yeah, those are fun. Um, yeah, I picked them for different reasons. Albert Pujols because of old man baseball. Um, and because everything Albert Pujols does now is just like that tacking on to an already Hall of Fame career. You know, like mm-hmm. that next home run is going to be exciting just because it's going to be like, you know, it's like that next home run on his stat line. Like, you're just watching a Hall of Famer like have a ball, have, have a blast out there. Um, and then Joey Votto is there because one, he is very good. And two, he is just such a personality. Like yes. every one of every time Joey Votto stands in the batter's box, it looks like he's just about to whisper, "Go fuck yourself." And and I love that about him. He's amazing. We talk about how much we love him constantly. He's been the bright point of many good Cincinnati Reds teams and many bad Cincinnati Reds teams. And I love him. Yeah, I mean, I I love Joey Votto so much. Um, you know, if it wasn't for uh, a certain player that I won't name, he would be my, you know, absolute favorite MLB player right now. Uh, and, you know, since I got into baseball, just you're right. That personality trumps everything else. Like he is just so fun to have around and to watch because he doesn't give a fuck. And he cracked up Jerry great. Seinfeld. He cracked What's up Jerry that? Seinfeld when he was at a game. Jerry went to a game and Votto, uh, waved and jerry waved back and vada looked at him and said i wasn't waving at you i was waving to the the, the guy behind you and jerry was like what the fuck are you talking about <laughs> only joey vada could pull that off with jerry seinfeld yeah i fucking love Votto. so who, who did who did you pick for first um in p- sticking with my um dr doolittle themed uh, i guess it's dr doolittle themed uh all fun team i went with a polar bear Pete Alonso, um, not quite the history that guys like Pujols and Joey Votto have, but if he can hit 60 home runs this year, that's really fucking fun. Like, we talk about this a lot, like what's more fun, like super exciting pitching, like just long ass dingers, uh, triples, whatever it may be. If you're going to a game watching baseball, you want to see home runs. Like it's it's one of the most purely exciting things to happen in a baseball game on a regular basis, and I just want to be able to have a guy that could hit sixty of them in a season. Oh, for sure. I I thought long and hard about doing um, uh, Pete Alonso for mine as well for all of those reasons because, and there's definitely a um, a common thread amongst several of my selections based on what I find to be fun <laughs> in in. Um, in watching baseball, as will be evidenced by my second base pick. But like, fuck, man! Like watching a lot of home runs is awesome, and Pete Alonso is like the current best first baseman at doing it. So I fully support this. Hundred uh, percent. Right, who you got for second base? So for second base, uh, in keeping with my, I like dudes who run around a lot. <laughs> uh, Whit Merrifield. Hmm. Whit Merrifield. Uh, all-star second baseman got robbed of star appearance by the cheating Jose Altuve one time. It was hilarious. Um, in 2019, he had 10 triples and 20 stolen bases. And that's really fun. Um, he also led all of baseball in hits with, so he led all of baseball in games, which is, uh, you know what it is at bats, hits, triples (laughs) and caught stealings. Uh, as well as having 20 stolen bases. And, like, if that's not fun, I don't know what is. <laughs> and and he's a good defender. So, yeah. Whit Merrifield. I also went with... Uh... Actually, I don't, I don't know if he has a, a fun mascot name. Um, he does now. Ozzy Little Hamster Albies. Because ah. he is very tiny and very exciting. That's a great uh, choice. He is a full foot shorter than me. Uh, also wow. led all of MLB in at bats and hits last year. Um, Wait, how many at bats did he have? Six forty. 
Oh, wait. Is it bolded or is it italicized? It's bolded. Bolded means he led the league. Italics mean he led all of baseball. Ooh. Okay. Yeah. So, because uh, because uh, Merrifield had six eighty has six eighty one, which is bolded and italicized, because he led the AL and all of baseball. You learn something new every day. Yes, we've for those used of you baseball reference uh, for so long. You'd think I would have picked up on that by now. Ah, eh, that's what it is. I wouldn't worry about it. Yeah, I'm not going to. Um, yeah, he is an exciting player to watch. Uh, this is you know he's great offensively. Silver Slugger last year, All Star the year before. But he also has some of the most exciting defense, not just good defense, but exciting defense around. Um, and that was a huge factor for me. He's definitely, you know, second base is kind of one of the the shallowest positions, especially when it comes to fun players. Um, I mean, yeah, either of us could have gone with Jose Altuve and made a good argument for why he's fun, but he's a punk ass little cheating bitch, and we don't condone that here. Nah, uh, fuck so, that dude. Fuck that dude. So I'm with the next best option for short, tiny defensive shortstop who also can hit the shit out of the ball with Ozzy Albies. I fully support this decision. Love the pick. Are you ready to move on to... Uh, I have third base next. Does that work for you? Yes. All right. So for my third base choice, uh, I went with uh, Yoan Moncada. Ooh. Yoan Moncada. Uh, so our our boy Yoan, <laughs> Yoan, uh, he is <laughs> he, he. First off, he's a young dude, which inherently makes players more exciting. I find you have to be either very young or very old for me to think that you're uh, super fun. <laughs> mm-hmm. um, so he just came off his age twenty four season. Um, he the reason I chose him is he he had a really really high BABIP last year. And I find that to just be entertaining. Um, I'm trying to find where it was because I just had it in front of me and now it's magically disappeared, which is very frustrating. Um, but I love the idea of players who can just kind of make contact and then figure it out. You know what I mean? Hmm. Like he just he just kind of put the ball in play and was like, I guess we're running. Like, <laughs> you know, like, all right, all right, let's do it. Let's go find a base. Um, and I'm really annoyed that I, I can't find his Babbitt because it's not on his baseball reference page. And yet that's where I found all these numbers from, which is very annoying. Uh, but yeah, give me, uh, give me, give me some sweet, sweet Yoan Mankata and his 141 OPS plus last year, which is quite good. I did not realize it was that high. Yeah, ni- neither did I. And I like did this research already, and I I didn't I didn't even see it. Uh, four oh six was his Babbitt, by the way. Damn. Four oh six, which is really high. Uh, what's that listed under? Uh, I had to go to the advanced stats page under his baseball reference, and then go down to advanced batting. Got it. Yeah. Um, I guess I'll do that too for my guy. Um. Yeah, so I don't think it's going to be any surprise uh, with who I pick. Uh, It's Matt Chapman. Yeah, it was the first name I guess that he had picked when we got on the phone. Yeah, it's it's Matt Chapman. Um, Matt Chapman. That's all you got to say. In his third season, uh, I guess we don't really need to count his rookie season. So two full seasons with Oakland, uh, two time Gold Glove, one time All Star, two time Platinum Glove, as well as winning the Wilson overall defensive player of the year um top seven in in mvp voting both years the best defensive player in all of baseball who also just happens to have a 126 and 137 ops plus and 36 home runs last year this man can father my child i just he can do no wrong i love him to death matt chapman it's such a great choice. The reason I didn't pick is because I knew I knew Corbin already had him. Um, so there was just no point in me doing it too. Great pick. Matt Chapman, mm-hmm. very fun. Um, let's talk about shortstops. Let's right, talk so, about short- uh, no, I, I pulled up Babip. I got to mention Babip. I went oh, into oh, yeah. all that work. I clicked like three different buttons. My <laughs> time in the sun is now. Let her, um, let her rip. So Matt Chapman batted... 278 in 2018. Okay. 249 last year. 
Okay. But his BABIP dropped from 338 to 270. Ah, okay. So regression is coming for the Chapman, and he is only getting better. Uh, uh, or or he's he's getting closer to his true talent. No, don't say that. All right. Uh, I also want to say, do you know what Matt Chapman's nickname is? He is a baseball nickname? reference. Um, chat. Cha- I was gonna say Chapman, but that's just his last name, Chappy. Chappy is the one I would think of, right? Because that's what I've heard. Uh, yeah, it's that's also what it listed was. as uh, Pegasus. Pegasus. Yeah. Why? I don't know. Yeah, I don't know, man. I Next time you see him, means. ask him for me. Next time you guys get together, why don't you? Why don't you? Why don't you ask him? Okay. Yeah, jeez. Next time I uh, stare into his window from a tree outside. And <laughs> moving on from that, that <laughs> um, <laughs> for shortstops, I went back to back White Sox here. Shortstop, <laughs> I picked Tim Anderson. Ooh, what a great pick! Really is. So for one thing, Tim Anderson, just for his actual stats, uh, he did lead all of baseball in batting average last year with 335. And you might be saying to yourself, batting average doesn't matter. And you're right, unless you're thinking to yourself, that's fun. Because while well, leading the league and leading any having a high batting average in general is no longer as nearly as important as it once was, it is still fun to see a dude bat like 340. Like that's still oh, yeah. fun baseball. Coupled with the fact that Tim Anderson is full of personality, uh, Mm -hmm. super dynamic player to watch. He plays a fun shortstop. I don't know how good he is at shortstop because I didn't look. but I know he plays a fun shortstop. His bat flips are exceedingly well known. Um, And he's he's just a loud dude in the best kind of way. Like in the way you wish more football players were like where he's really hyped about the game but not like super duper cocky he just like he's like i did that shit i'm gonna run around the bases and have a good time with my friends uh <laughs> he's uh he's, he's he's great i fucking love him I, I he's one of the the first dudes that made me want to play the white Sox um more than just passively i i all about tim anderson yeah like he's been very vocal about He's not really focused on, I don't want to say he's not focused on himself, but he's not focused on personal achievement. It's he wants to put on a show for the fans. And I love that. Yeah. Seems like a, just seems like a genuine dude. Yep. Big fan of his. Uh, I went with someone in a similar vein with Javi Baez. Ah, great choice. Uh, Just another one of those guys with great offense, great defense. And just a fucking shitload of personality. You know, I want a guy who, when you catch uh, a game winning pass in the world's, not the World Series, but the, uh, what is it, the World Cup? World Baseball Classic. Yes. Yeah. Uh, yeah. You catch the ball to uh, tag a guy out at second base without even fucking looking at him. That's fun. You know, I want a guy who pimps a home run. And then robs a stolen base in you know the same inning, and that's Javi Baez to a T. Uh, there's definitely no doubt about his personality. Um, just a fun, exciting fella. El Mago, man, the magician. Yes, I knew what that meant. Uh, I definitely didn't also think that was an animal. <laughs> that's okay, buddy. Uh, shall we move to outfield? Yes. Do you want to do it one at a time, or should we do all three? Uh, how did you break it down? Did you pick three outfielders or left, right, center? Uh, I put left, right, center, but like I don't think it really needs to be left, right, center. I also did left, right, center, so might as well stick with that. All right. Then uh, I got right field first. In right field, I put Malik Smith. Ooh. Um, the stolen base god. He stole... 46 bases last year, which led all the baseball, and yet also had a negative war, which is hilarious. Um, but if you're looking for a dude to provide uh, a bit of fun, he's a short, speedy motherfucker who um, is a, I guess, a big threat if he gets on the bases. <laughs> Lord knows he has a hard time getting there. Um, and provides relatively shitty defense. So that's just going to make Malik Smith. And an interesting watch every single time he's on your television. 
And uh, I appreciate that. So, Malik Smith. I went... Uh, I'm going to butcher this fucking name, and I love it. Can't wait. I went with Aristides Aquino. Oh, I think you nailed it. Really? Oh, yeah. Fuck yes. Um, Cincinnati Reds rookie last year. Just out of nowhere, seemingly hit a home run every other attempt. Um, was one of the most exciting guys to watch um, in all of baseball. I love that about him. Uh, I'm excited to see what he does this year. I know nothing about his defense. I know nothing about anything about him other than he hits pimp-ass home runs, and that's all you need to know. Look, man, listen. If, if Dante Bichette can stay in baseball as long as he did with his defense, I think if Aristides Aquino comes out and does half of what he did last year for a full season, that man could literally start chewing grass and they wouldn't care. Exactly. Like, uh, he's got this goofy-ass stance that doesn't make any sense when you're actually batting. It's just, I want to see him hit 80 home runs this year. And I hope I he does. I want to see anyone hit 80 home runs. That'd be amazing. Yeah, okay. That, at what that's, point, that's a at statement what, that makes a lot of sense. At what point during the season do you go, oh shit, I need to start watching Because like, if he has 40 by the All-Star like oh shit let's start watching or if he gets it's, like 65 and you go oh shit he could break barry bonds' record like i gotta start like when do you go what number do you start going i now need to watch a lot of reds games oh man um i mean if he hits 40 by the all-star break i will definitely already be watching that um i think if he hits like 15 by the end of april you know end of april beginning of may like around that time if he has like 15 getting into 20 that's like okay this guy can actually do this i definitely think i'd probably still wait for later on in the season but if he had for me i think it'd probably be, be 59 i think i'd want to see number six because no one has hit 60 in, in in recent memory while quote unquote clean the only people that have done it are um Barry Bonds, which again steroids alleged. Um I think Sammy Sosa did it. I think. Uh and Mark McGuire. So all all Roids users. So if he if he got 59, I would start I would start watching for number 60. Uh yeah, for sure. Or anyone really. Anyway, um center field I kind of have a cop out, but it's still true. Uh, I picked Mike Trout. I also picked Mike Trout. I don't <laughs> yeah, know how you could pick might. anyone else for this position. I know. And the thing is, like, I could come up with a weird. I thought about that for a minute, and then I was like, this is the all fun team. Mike Trout is the most fun player in all of baseball. Like, sure, I said that about Williams Estadio. I said that about, you know, Matt Chapman because, you know, I'm biased. It's Mike Trout, bar none. It's just that he's the most he's the most talented. You might enjoy other people's personalities or their weird statistical categories that we've laid out for. If you're looking for just raw true talent in all the categories that actually matter, it it's it's Mike Trout. And if you put that guy in either of our teams with these weird good but but personality laden teams and you drop Mike Trout into it, he oh my god, it'd be such it'd be such a fun fucking team. Because he would just round out every team he's on, except the Angels, because they're trash. So yeah, yeah I went, I, we both went, went, went with Mike Trout. All right, I like that. <laughs> That's good poetry. Um, so should we just jump to left field then? Yeah, let's do that. All right. Uh, it's, it's it's kind of a cop out here as well for me. I'm I'm not going to lie to you here, um, but I I went with Christian Yelich. Um. Yeah. I don't blame you. Yeah, he um what did I pick him? I think I picked him for his base running. He um oh, I have ten thousand tabs open. And I think I might have closed it. No, that's so sad. Oh, there it is. Um so baseball reference has what they call um our baser, which is runs from base running. 
So it's the number of runs better or worse than the average player was for base running events, which they classify as stolen bases, caught stealing, PB, which I don't know what that's – oh, pass ball, um, wild pitch, and defensive indifference. And Christian Yelich was second in all of baseball last year in this category was 6.6 um, runs from base running like above average or some shit. Only behind Gerard Dyson of Arizona, which felt like just too obscure of a name to include on my list anywhere here. Not about to pick 1.3 war Gerard Dyson over Mike Trout. <laughs> so um, Christian Yelich, but for his base running. I appreciate that. I appreciate that you picked one of the best players in baseball, but was specific with it. I thought you might like that. Who do you got? I went with uh, another guy that's kind of a. A gimme. It's uh, it's Juan Soto. I think it's still a great choice, though. That's, yeah. that, that's the tough part about this, is like the best players are also usually the most fun. Like, he has such a great personality. He's so young and is getting so much better every year. Just all around, uh, one of my favorite players in baseball. Super exciting. He is still uh, Joey Votto light. Walks the hell out of the ball. That doesn't make sense as a sentence. It doesn't, but I liked the way it sounded. (laughs) (laughs) Um, Just really fun to watch, uh, especially in that uh, World Series run. Uh, He's just so exciting. Totally. I love it. Great choice. Um, Did you pick a designated hitter? I did. All right. I did as well, and it's a very stupid choice. It's not... It's it's really dumb, and I fully acknowledge it, but it was also just too funny to not bring up. Um, I picked Clayton Kershaw. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know if you know this, but Clayton Kershaw led all of baseball last year in sack hits. Really? Really. Clayton Kershaw led all of baseball last season in sacrifice hits with 15. Um, in fact... All three of the top um, sack hits getters last year were Dodgers pitchers. Clayton Kershaw had 15, Kenta Maeda had 13, and Hunjin Ryu had 12. That's actually incredibly impressive. I think this might be like an under-highlighted um, part of the Dodgers um, schematic when it comes to how they play their game, because that actually like that's uh, 30 additional. Um, sacrifice hits or 30 additional bases, uh, you guys who could say, um, achieved by Dodgers pitchers as offense. And that has to stand for something. Mm-hmm. Um, so I want, I want the, uh, the sack hit God. Give me Clayton Kershaw. Okay. I, I kind of went uh, a little more uh, normal with it. Thank you. <laughs> uh, I went with uh, Shohai Otani san. Ah, you also picked a pitcher, I see. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> uh, Josh got jokes. Um, yeah, I mean, it's just something about a guy like Otani who, yes, he is a pitcher that can throw in triple digits and also hit 700 foot home runs. Um, I saw a picture of him wearing like a like a sleeveless sh- shirt the other day, and I didn't realize that his shoulders are unbelievable. Like he he looks like a professional boxer or like LeBron James with like a small Japanese man's head just placed right on top. Yeah. He gained a lot. Like I saw a side by side uh, to the angels versus now. And he's so big now. And everyone's joking that he did steroids, which I'm sure he did not because Mm -hmm. that's fucking stupid. Uh, But like, wow, his transformation is complete. He is huge. (laughs) I really hope it doesn't fuck with his pitching. I don't know enough about pitching itself to know if that will play a huge difference. Um, hey, Araldus Chapman's a pretty buff dude, and he was like the record holder for fastest pitch forever. That's true. Um, yeah, I mean, Shohei Otani, super exciting, super genuine guy, which as far Seems as personality like a really nice goes, dude. is yeah. often really overlooked. Um. And he's the kind of guy I want to have on my team and I want to root for every time he goes to the plate. Uh, no, I fully support it. I Great, great choice. Excellent choice. 
Um, so shall we get into pitching? Yes. So how did you break this down exactly? So I have uh, one starter and two relievers, which can be thought of as a setup man closer or really however you choose to think of it. Um, but that's the basic breakdown. Starting pitcher, two relievers. So I, I have a starting pitcher, I have a closer, and I have a setup man. Perfect. Totally works. Okay. So for my starter, I ran a query, and I looked for uh, all pitchers, all starting pitchers in 2019 that had uh, 200 more strikeouts. All right, so a lot, a lot of strikeouts. And a FIP of over four, which means uh, they're, they're, they're letting a lot of balls go go around you know uh you want you want a low fip they had a high fip um a high fip meaning that that the ball was getting put in play a lot and only six pitchers met this requirement and so i picked from those six who i deemed uh the most fun and i picked mike minor uh interesting okay mike minor who had exactly 200 strikeouts for the first time in his career and he had a fip of 4.25 and led baseball in literally nothing. <laughs> he was like the brightest point on a mediocre Texas Rangers team. Seems like a really nice dude. Uh, plays in a cool ballpark, although now he'd be playing in a new ballpark because that ballpark's gone. And uh, and I like the Rangers uniforms. So, so Mike Miner. Very cool. Are you interested in who these five other pitchers are? Yes. Uh, Trevor Bauer. He had 253 strikeouts, a 4.34 FIP. Matthew Boyd of Detroit, uh, 238 strikeouts, a 4.32 FIP. Robbie Ray of the Diamondbacks, 235 strikeouts, 4.29 FIP. You Darvish, 229 strikeouts with a 4.18 FIP. And Aaron Nola, 229 strikeouts on a 4.03 FIP. And real quick, just a total side note, um, speaking of you Darvish, were you aware that he is the all-time career leader in strikeouts per nine. Uh, I did not. Yeah, he is the all-time career leader in strikeouts per nine. That's... 11.12. Damn, okay. Yeah, just behind him is Chris Sale at 11.08. I love that. Yeah, and then just behind them is like Randy Johnson. Actually, there's a lot of active players on this list, so I just read out the top ten really quick. Hugh Darvish, Chris Sale, Randy Johnson, Steven Strasburg, Max Scherzer, Kerry Wood, who I'm not sure you know, he is retired, uh, Jacob deGrom, Derek Cole, Pedro Martinez, and then Chris Archer. Damn. Chris Archer, uh, one spot ahead of Corey Kluber and two spots ahead of Clayton Kershaw. It's just bizarre. Uh, but yeah, Hugh Darvish, all-time career leader in strikeouts for now. And Mike Miner, my starting pitcher choice. <laughs> um, so with mine, I really wanted to make sure like there's so many good pitchers. Um no, I didn't want to just pick like a, a Chris Sale or Clayton Kershaw, or whoever. I wanted to go with personality, which immediately made me think I want a guy like Max Scherzer on the mound. Ah, uh, yes. But Max Scherzer is too good. Ooh, um okay. I wanted to take someone a little little under under the radar, uh, since we're only getting one pitcher. So I went with the next best thing with Chris Paddock. Ah, okay, definitely. Little Max Scherzer light uh, throws a beautiful ball and is also a raging psychopath on the mound, which is probably the biggest uh, biggest point I wanted to find when it came to pitcher. Um, little Sheriff, I just I love that man too. Uh, I am super excited for his sophomore season. Uh, and I really hope he pulls it all together. I love pitchers who are cartoonishly Texan. Yes. And that is Chris Paddock. I want Chris Paddock and Phillip Rivers to be friends. Oh, that'd be hilarious. <laughs> well, um, hey, maybe, maybe it's perfect because Phillip Rivers plays in San Francisco, San Diego. <laughs> no, he doesn't. Now he doesn't even play in Los Angeles. <laughs> I don't know. We still don't know where he's going to play. Uh, New England. God, I hope not. That'd be hilarious. Although I would also hate it. Watch um, this be like the first year the Patriots missed the playoffs. It'd be the first year they missed it since 2000. 
2010? I think. 2008? 2008. That was the year Brady went down. Shit. Anyway, I'm going to give you both of my relief pitchers uh, at the same time because they kind of tie into each other. Okay. Um, so for my relief pitching, I went Team Chaos because mm-hmm. I was thinking to myself, well, if I'm a neutral fan, then I want to see the the most chaos possible when the relief pitchers come, especially if they're coming in during importance. Uh, so for my relief pitcher, um, I didn't give them um, – Set up man or closer because it doesn't matter with my two selections. Um, I went with Kenley Jansen because okay. he led all of baseball last year in bulks. <laughs> and I went with Jake Diekman who led all of baseball last year in hit by pitches. Really? Yes. And <laughs> so I want to see these two dudes come up here and basically just forget how to throw the ball and then hit people when they, when they figure it out. Oh, hell yeah. Yeah, Jake Diekman had 11 <laughs> hit by pitches. <laughs> that's a lot that's fucking hilarious i love that yeah so there you go <laughs> um let's see who did i have so i guess uh i guess i'll give you both two for setup man i gave adam Ottavino, uh, a new york choice. yankee lots of good movement there yeah uh i know i've said this a lot but i love pitchers with a ton of movement on their breaking balls. I love watching that movement. Um, and his slider is the best I've ever seen. It's so uh, disgusting. And a pitcher that wears number zero is really fun. Um, That's true. That is fun. That is a, that is an underrated part of fun. Exactly. Um, and then I went with, I don't know uh, if this is, just as easy of a guess as Matt Chapman, but I went with Josh Hader as my closer. Yeah, it's not that surprising. <laughs> that's it's crazy how good of a pitcher he is, and still to this day, like I still think he's underappreciated as a pitcher, uh, and just how easily he can strike people out and just dominate a game. Yeah, no, that is that's a great choice. Plus, he I... has some great hair. He's mildly racist. What else could you want? Oh, yes, I I love a good um, um, controversial player. <laughs> so I guess that concludes our all fun team for, yeah. for 2019. Are you ready to jump into uh, the all timer? Uh, before we do, do you have anybody on the current active list that we didn't talk about but you wanted to mention? I don't think I did. I I was thinking about who I. But unfortunately, there's no good, wild, and crazy managers. Um, mm-hmm. But I didn't have any players in mind in particular. Um, did if you? Buck Walter was still managing, he would have been my pick. Buck Walter would be a good pick. Um, Joe Madden might be a good manager. He, he'd be, he'd be yeah, weird. He, he's always doing weird, funky shit. Yeah. Um, oh, shit. Who did the Astros just hire uh, from Washington? Chili Davis. What? Chili Davis. I don't think that's it. Yeah, the Astros just hired Chili Davis. As their manager? Yeah, he was the manager of Washington, and now he is the manager of the Astros. I don't think that's his name. Oh, Chili is not his actual first name, but that's what his... That's what he's... If you go to his baseball reference page, it says Chili Davis. Really? Yeah, like his, 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 his sports name, his official sports name is Chili Davis. I want to... So... I looked it up. It's Dusty Baker. Oh, um, shit. It's Dusty Baker? Yeah. Oh, fuck. Why am I thinking Chili Davis? I don't know. I don't even know who Chili Davis is. Oh, I thought Chili... Da- oh, wait. Wait. Hold on. I thought it was Chili Davis. No, it was uh, uh, Dusty Baker. Oh, okay. Chili Davis was Chili really Davis going to the Actually Mets. is this guy's name. Wait, what? Like Chili Davis, I looked him up on Baseball Reference. That you're right, like that's his name. Yeah, his real name is Charles Theodore Davis, but yeah, everyone called him Chili. He was up for the Mets job. That's why I'm thinking of him. Uh, he gotcha. didn't get hired by the Mets, but he was up for the Mets job. Right. Well, he, he might be up again. No, no, like like, like just just recently, because I think the Mets hired somebody. Else. Oh, after they got rid of Beltron. Yeah, I think they already made. 
their uh oh no he wait, he is working for the Mets. Wait, is he the Mets new manager? Hold on, I who's managing know. the Mets? I'm so confused. Mets man Okay, so maybe he got hired as a coach for the Mets. Because it does say on his on his Wikipedia page that he is currently a coach for the Mets, 2019 to present. So maybe that's it. I, oh, I, I feel so bad for, for for swapping out Chili Davis and uh, um, Dusty Baker because they are two very different people. <laughs> I'm sorry to both of your your family. Rest in peace. <laughs> is he dead? No, he's very alive. <laughs> Uh, rest in peace. Uh, he's currently coaching the Mets, so it's still a question. You know, <laughs> rest in peace, boss hogs. Rest in peace. Um, so yeah, Dusty Baker. <laughs> um, I, where were we even going with this? I don't even remember. Dude, I don't know either. Do you want to just go to the all time team? Yeah, let's do that. All right. Uh, so do you have anything in stone, or should I just navigate through? navigate us away okay so for a catcher i I, it's kind of about honestly um i have a tie here between johnny bench and yogi berra um johnny bench for the talent yogi berra for the combination of talent and massive personality um (laughs) a small dude i know i know there's a lot of yankees bias in there for myself but also like the quote factory that was yogi berra i think deserves to be on here and then johnny bench for like Inventing catching, <laughs> for like inventing modern day catching. Naturally, um, just two great players and uh, two certainly fun dudes. Plus, Yogi Berra has thirteen World Series rings. Like that's that's amazing. Is he really? Yeah, uh, ten as a player and then three as a coach and manager. Jesus Christ. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yogi Berra, very good at baseball. Yeah, those would have been the only two names I would have been able to come up with. The, the Maybe two, I mean, like, like Yachty Molina if I was just really unable to remember those two guys, but yeah. You know, Buster Posey's a recent one too. Uh, uh, Pudge Rodriguez would be would be a great choice. Pudge uh, would be a good one. Yeah. Uh, Elston Howard would be a good choice. Uh, Campanello would be a good choice. There's, there's, there's other guys, but yeah. Um, all right, that brings us over to first base. And for first base, I went with Pete Rose. Um, because he he was the all time leader in in hits, uh, I believe he's the all time leader in runs scored as well. Not that that one really matters. Um, and he liked to gamble, and this team would certainly be more interesting for it. Um, yeah, Pete Rose is currently the all time leader in hits uh, with forty two hundred fifty six. So that's fun. Um, you know, it, he, it's certainly one of them. And and uh, I like a good controversial player here here and there. You know. So, yeah, give me that sweet, sweet Pete Rose, who, by the way, led is the all-time leader in games played, played appearances, at-bats, and hits. Damn. That's yeah. a lot. That's, that's well, a whole lot. He, um, he was the manager, so he just put himself in the lineup every day. Yeah, of course. Um, I also would appreciate the fact that we can make arrested developments if he's on our team every day. True. Sliding headfirst in the home plate like Pete Rose. Love it. Do you have anyone you would have put there? At first base? Yeah. Any 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 um, names coming to mind? Man, I don't know. First base is kind of hard. Albert Pujols probably. Which would be a great choice. Yeah. It's I just hard to Albert think Pujols. of, you know, all-time first baseman that I don't know off the top of my head. Or that I do know off the top of my head. Um, I'm trying to think of who would be some some good uh, first baseman choices. Like I know we mentioned this earlier. I don't know if it was in the recording, but coming up with names is one thing. Coming up with names and also what random position they played. Well, not random, but what position they played is tough. Yeah, it is. It is. Um, uh, you could Lou, Lou Gehrig. Okay, that would have been a good one. Lou Gehrig played first, I'm pretty sure. I hope so. I'm wrong. Thanks. But, yeah. yeah. I was yeah. just about to uh, ask if that meant we got Marilyn Monroe, too, but then I realized that's Joe DiMaggio. That is a different Yankee who played, like, four, 20 years later. Uh, yeah. <laughs> all right, you ready for my all-time second baseman? 
Yeah. This one was really hard, so this one I didn't take very hard. I went with Alexi Casilla. Have you ever heard of Alexi Casilla before? Uh, no. He played for nine years at MLB from 2006 to 2014. Um, if, he, if you had to ask me what era Alexi Casilla played in, I would have been like 1965. Yeah, no, no. He played very recently for the Minnesota Twins and the Baltimore Orioles. Um, although in 2014, he played in one game. So, you know. Um, he amassed in that time 3.9 war uh, with a 73 OPS plus, but he is the all-time leader in stolen base percent. Really? So, yes, he has 80 stolen bases to 11 caught steals, including his 20, 2012 campaign in which he stole two, 21 bases and one caught stealing. Um, Jesus Christ. Yeah, which honestly, uh, I guess just not... In, he he probably would have had a longer career if he played like thirty years ago, right? With those numbers, because like in twenty twelve he had a two forty one batting average and a two eighty two on base with a three twenty one slugging, which is terrible, good for a six oh three OPS. But like that probably would have been fine enough combined with his ability to steal bases to get him more opportunities. Um, not that he deserves them today; they're right to not give them to him. But just as a point, so uh, for for the stolen base percent god, second base, Alexi Casilla. I hope that means you have a certain other player that I won't name yet for spoilers, but would be pretty easy to figure out with context. Oh uh, yes, I think I do. Nice. Um, for third base, um, I went with. So I have I have it in my spreadsheet. I have uh, position name mm-hmm. and then reason and i really struggled for the base spot uh just because i was trying to think of someone with one of the you know the weird st- or, or niche or small time or unimportant statistical category to go with but i decided not to so for my reason i just put he good i went with brooks robinson okay uh, brooks robinson a great baseball player a hall of famer um he's played for for a very very long time uh 23 years if i'm not mistaken um, his career was forever. Yeah, twenty three seasons. Um, MVP award winner, two World Series, World Series MVP, All Star MVP. Um, really, just great. Seventy eight point four career WAR. Great ball player. Also, though, just to throw one niche niche stat in there, the all time leader in double plays turned as a third baseman with 618. Holy shit. Yeah, the next highest on that list, you might ask, number two, Adrian Beltre, 523. Holy shit. And just to really put the nail in the coffin here, the number three person on that list, Craig, Greg Nettles, uh, 470. So the gap between Brooks Robinson at number one and Greg Nettles at number three is 148 <laughs> double plays. Which is just crazy. I uh, honestly, if you told me the leader what had 148 double plays, I'd have been like, okay, sure, that makes a lot of sense. Double plays are not that common. Uh, yeah, especially as a third baseman. Um, yeah, exactly. 100, 148 double plays, real quick, is Wayne Garrett at one number 129 on this list. I don't know who he is. <laughs> Yeah, I don't Andy agree Rendell? with your third base choice, but I, I can appreciate it. Who would you have picked not named Matt Chapman? Oh, uh, so you, you had a little caveat on that statement that I just, I don't know how to answer. Ooh, where do you think Matt Chapman is on this list? Seeing as he's played two and a half seasons, probably not very high. He is 231st. Yeah. He has 98 double plays already. In two and a half seasons? Yeah, Justin Turner, what? by the way, is only Justin Turner is only like a f- handful of spots ahead of him because Justin Turner, who's played 11 seasons, has 100. What? Matt, Matt Chapman is the greatest so player good. of all time. Matt Chapman's so fucking good, man. Wow. So he's going to have more double plays than Justin Turner as a third baseman next season for sure. In four seasons, the Justin Turner's had in 12. That's nuts. This is amazing. Wow. Yeah. My love for Matt Chapman has only grown. Are you ready to hear my shortstop? Yes. Is this is a name. No. This is a name I found on accident, and I think you're going to love it. 
Um, I went with Herman Long. Okay. Herman 70 Long. grade name. <laughs> Agreed. Uh, Herman Long played from 1889 to 1904. 16 years. Um, you might be asking yourself, Josh, how did you find Herman Long? And that's because he's the all-time leader in errors. <laughs> Guess how many? Oh, God. I, I don't know. I have no idea how it even is this. I want you to guess. All-time leader in errors? Yes. How many years did he play? Um, 16. 16 years? Uh, f- fuck. I'm going to say 320. 1,096. Fuck you. No <laughs> way. 1,096 errors. How did he play for six years? I guess they just didn't care back then. I guess like the U.S. population was like 300, so they like there wasn't a whole lot of people to play baseball. But god damn! So in his 1889 season, he committed 122 errors. I have like the guy at their home stadium had to have like this guy Herman Long must have fucked his wife, and just every <laughs> single play, it's like, well, Herman fucked it up again, another error. Like- I think pop fly to right field. Oh, Herman couldn't get there. Error. So, because like Matt Chapman led in uh, the league in errors one year with like, oh, uh, like somewhere in the teens. But that's only because Matt Chapman like makes a lot of throws that like a lot of people don't make because he's very good. But mm-hmm. still, like he led all of baseball with like, I want to say somewhere in the upper teens of that year. And that's that was that's considered a lot, you know, like even like. Even upper single digits is considered a lot. Like, if you have eight, nine errors, like, that's considered a lot of errors. 122 in one season. That's unbelievable. Unbelievo. <laughs> yeah. So, uh, Herman Long is my shortstop. Um, all right. So, who do you got for. We did, I guess, outfields next? Yeah, so, uh, again, the outfield spots are kind of loose. Um, I, I think you'll like them, though. I'm just going to read at, at once. Um, in right field, I put Ricky Henderson. Naturally. I'm assuming this is the player you were referencing earlier. 100%. Yeah, uh, this is just an obvious one. He's the all-time leader in stolen bases. He is so much fucking fun. He's also the all-time leader in um, leadoff home runs to start a game with 82, which is also super fun. Love Ricky Henderson. Um, I would love in, if that was all in one season, but I have a feeling oh it wasn't. Oh, my God. Uh, no. <laughs> yeah, 82 home runs in one season. Come on. 82 home runs in one season, all leading off the game. Anyway, um, in center field, I put Ty Cobb. Um, <laughs> also kind of a cop out because Ty Cobb, very good at baseball. We all know this. Um, but I also picked a, a relatively specific reason for him because he is, um, I think, the all-time leader in BABIP. Is he really? I believe so. I'm trying to see where I had it at. Uh, but I might, yeah, he is the all time Babbitt. Um, he has a lifetime 443 Babbitt. Lifetime. Jesus. Yeah, huge. Or no, actually, that was just his 1911. My bad. Man, Sorry whatever. about that. Yeah. Anyway, uh, Ty Cobb. All time great in the Hall of Fame, super good at baseball. And then in my left field spot, I put Jose Canseco. Good. Love <laughs> it. Yep. Yep. Uh, half, half the Bash Brothers. Um, you know, he's good and I can read you his stats, but I, I, want, I want a guy out there who's going to tell me about how time travel is real, where the aliens are, and who, who, he, who he's had sex with, because that's who Jose Canseco is. I need conspiracy theories. I need to know. I need to open my third eye. This makes me so happy that he's there because I'm a fan of Jose Canseco. If How you haven't picked up be? on this, and he is such a fun player. Oh, yeah. Oh, and he'll, he'll, he's going to bring the entertainment, whether he's bouncing home runs off his head <laughs> or hitting them himself. Uh, he's going he's gonna to bring the entertainment. That's for sure. Uh, um, yeah, uh, is that all three? Yes, which brings me to my DH. I went 
with Paul Molitor. Um, so Paul Molitor is a very well-regarded baseball player. He played for a really long time. He's also currently the manager of the, uh, um, at least I think he's still the manager of the Milwaukee Brewers. Although I forget if now, now I'm trying to remember if he's the manager of the Brewers or if he was the manager of the Twins and got fired. I always do this with him. <laughs> um, I feel so bad. He he he's my he's the Chili Davis to to um to, to Dusty Baker in this in this scenario because I always mix him up with the other guy. <laughs> I feel so bad. Yeah, no, he was the manager of the Twins who got fired. I'm so sorry. <laughs> anyway, anyway, Paul Molitor. Um. So he's the all-time leader in DH stolen bases. Um, how many do you think he has? Designated hitter stolen bases. How many years did he play? Uh, 20 seasons from 1978 to 1998. 20. I'm going to say this is this is not me trying to guess poorly, so it sounds crazy. I'm trying to guess for accuracy. I think he's going to have 300 stolen bases. So that's a really interesting guess. So that would put him first all time because Don Baylor is second with 285. So 300 stolen bases would put him in first place. But he has 504. Oh, fuck. You know what's so crazy? So he has 504, and the 10th most stolen bases by a DH is Brian Downing with 50. What? The fourth most? 10th most. 10th, oh. 10th most. Still, yeah, like, like Nelson Cruz is number seven on this list. Nelson Cruz has been playing forever with seventy six, and Paul Molitor is first with five hundred. Where's Albert Pujols on this list? Oh, dude, I don't think that's even a fair question to ask. Oh yeah. man, David Ortiz had seventeen. No kidding, uh, really? Yeah, apparently. Um, I don't even see him on this list. I don't feel like looking that far, and it's going to make me sad if I. <laughs> um, yeah, this is a weird list, man. Uh, Chili Davis is here. Good old, good old Dusty Baker slash Chili Davis with 142. Is, is that our next uh, inside joke on the podcast? It definitely Chili is. Davis and P- Dusty Baker are the same person. You know, what, you know what's crazy is Shohei Otani is also in the top 20 on, in this list already. With 22. <laughs> he's number 18. That's phenomenal. Also, also, he's right ahead of a player named Lamar Johnson. And I thought at first I got really confused. <laughs> Oh, uh, what a fun episode this has become. I yeah, love this. Uh, I'm having a great time. Um, so yeah, Paul, Paul Molitor, um, are you ready for my pitching? Yes. All right, for starting pitcher, I really thought about it, and there's a lot of weird stats things with pitching, especially if you go to the early days. So I decided to just fuck the stats shit and go with um, a fun player, and I went with Tim Lincecum. Oh, love that. Yeah, yeah. Uh, under my reason, I put little man throws hard. Um, <laughs> um, just a great fucking ball. Like his, his peak was insane, and granted, it was only like a couple of years. It was so much fun to watch. He's so, one yeah. of those players where, like, I'm sad I missed out on him. Yeah, no, I understand it. Like, I, I, most of my viewing of his games is through like watching his highlights on YouTube or like watching old games of his on YouTube because I remember him being a player, but like. Again, it was at that point in my fandom where it's like I'm too young to give a fuck about players that weren't on my team, especially a West Coast team where their game starts so much later and like all that shit. So I remember like I remember the World Series that he was in, but I don't remember him particularly from them. So I have this weird, vague memory of Tim Tim Lincecum, but uh, mm-hmm. even just watching the highlights, you get a sense of how he was as a player. I remember him as a reliever, not as a starting pitcher. Oh, really? That's interesting. Yeah. And that's to my dismay because I wish I knew him as a starting pitcher when he was the Tin Lincecum most people remember. Um, and, you know, I, I missed out. Like, I don't think it's the same level as Albert Pujols, obviously, but it's it's one of those things where I missed out on a great pitcher's um, peak. Yeah, it, it, luckily he existed in the YouTube era, so we can, uh-huh. we can go find his video. Um, I did think about other pitchers who I like. I remember watching Randy Johnson very particularly because he was a Yankee. Mm-hmm. Um, so I, I, I remember him because I rooted for him for a while there. I remember um, Pedro Martinez 
because we just played against him so much. So I thought about putting him there too, because um, those are also two very, very good, fun pitchers. But I figured Tim Lincecum is underrepped. So, Timmy. Too bad. Um, uh, yeah, so for my relief pitchers, I have one all-time great and uh, no, I got two all-time greats. Um, so for my relief pitcher, why not put Margano Rivera for obvious reasons? Of course. The consensus, consensus greatest um, closing pitcher of all time. And for my relief pitcher, too, I put Chris Davis because uh, he, he, throws, <laughs> uh, he throws knuckleballs, I think, or change-ups. I forget what he throws. But, uh, yeah, he, he, he pitched three innings last year and let up no runs. And uh, that makes him one of the greatest relief pitchers of all time. <laughs> Have you been following along with uh, Chris Davis so far in spring training this year? It's been phenomenal. Yeah. Oh, man, I'm trying to find it. Um, I think he only right has here. like one put out so far. So he has played in four games, 11 plate appearances with seven at-bats, five hits, three home runs, five RBIs. Love it. With four walks, only one strikeout with... A slash line of 714, 818, 2000 for a 2818 OPS. And, and that's exactly what I'm expecting from bases. him in the regular season. <laughs> and what? That's exactly what I'm expecting from him from the regular season. I fucking hope so. Uh, I, yeah, man. So that wraps up my... my... There we go. The, uh, the only thing I would have changed for yours is starting pitching. I would have put Doc Ellis up there. Oh, that's a so great that choice. So that our starting pitcher could be on fucking LSD every game. Please watch the documentary if you have not watched it. No, no. Yeah, yeah. It's called No, No, right? Yeah. Yeah, great documentary. Although it kind of ends on a sad note, but... All right, so f- fuck Google. All right, so I just opened up a new tab, and it says searches related to your history, Chili Davis stats, Chili Davis quotes. And it's like, all right, I get it. <laughs> all right, I understand. Why do they care about Dusty Baker so much? I don't know. Um, also, it has here um, Chuck Knobloch, who is who the second baseman I was trying to think of while we were talking about this beforehand, because he was the guy that got um, the yips and couldn't throw to first base. And it's one of the guys I wanted to include in my all-time list, and I couldn't think of his fucking name. So the fact that Chuck Knobloch is also here makes me concerned for my health. <laughs> I think I'm being watched. Good. Uh, yeah. So this is just fun. This was a lot of fun. I enjoyed this. You want to you wanna talk a little football shit before we wrap it up? Um, yeah, we can do that. Uh, do uh, you I don't want to go super in-depth on the you... Combine just because uh, it's not over yet. And if we are going to dive into it, um, <laughs> I'd rather do a little more than a little less. Yeah, yeah it can be saved for later. It's not pressing. Um. So do you want to, what, what, what were some of the topics we had? I didn't write anything down, which is always the how we fuck shit up. Um, well, the salary cap is going up to $200 million. Yes, $200 million projected for 2020. Um, $12 million increase from last year. Uh, it's currently at 188.2. This is one of those things where even though they're in the middle of uh, CBA negotiations, the salary cap is going to move along and just keep rising and rising independently from that uh, unless they uh, severely change the structure. Um, So regardless of what they negotiate with the CBA, it's still going to keep going up. More money for players. uh, Salaries are just going to keep going to shoot up. And I love this. Um, It going up every year allows... Uh, teams a lot more flexibility with their salary cap. It allows uh, more players to make more money. It allows better players to make more money. This is just great all around. Um, yeah, you have any comments on this? No, I'm pretty much what you said. Like seeing the salary cap going up only only means more money is going to be spent on players, which is always a thing you and I support. Mm-hmm. Uh, players getting money is something bizarre that we have to or not we in particular, but that has to be fought for. But it um, is so important that the people doing the thing that make So, totally thrilled some, about it. I have some news here for you that came in in the last 10 minutes. Oh, what is it? Uh, Pro Football Talks' Mike Florio reports free agent right tackle Jack Conklin is expected to sign with the New York Jets. 
Really? Yeah, that is huh. huge for the Jets. Finally. He is, is one of the top right tackles in the league. That's literally, immediately, the most that we have done to address our offensive line since before McCagney got hired, because that man just refused to do it. Which is awful. One of the best ways to ruin your team is to fuck with your offensive line. Like, he saw um, DeBrickashaw Ferguson and uh, Nick Mangold retire in like the span of the same two or three seasons and barely addressed their losses. Which is crazy. Um, so. so how would you feel? So that basically shores up your right tackle spot for the next forever. Um, let's see. What what pick did, did the Jets have? I don't have it off the top of my head. Um, 11, I believe. Where would you like to see them go? Because you could easily get uh, right now one of the top four tackles in the class. And this is a all-time year for grabbing left tackles. Would you like to see them double up and shore up the bookends? Or now that you shored up one side of the line, would you like to see them go somewhere else? So this has been a, a big debate on Jets Twitter, actually, for the past several months. Uh, should the Jets use their first-round pick on a offensive lineman or on a wide receiver? Because those are like two big positions of need, and that's two of the positions that are actually rather available this year in the draft class. Historic year for both of those uh, position groups. Exactly. I, however, would rather... I, I, I'm on the side of staying with the offensive line. It's one of those things where it's hardly ever a deep year for that, mm -hmm. and it's hardly ever a deep free agency class for that. Like, you cannot rely on that. It doesn't usually happen that way. And the fact that the Jets can address their offensive line woes in both this year is huge. Huge. Right. Like, wide receivers that have good talent... I'm not saying wide receiver ones. Those are hard to come by. But wide receivers that have good talent are around at different varying points enough that it's not something I'm sweating right now. Um, plus, I think there's enough that we can get good talent there in the late, you know, the second day. Um, especially because we have a decent amount of capital this year in the draft. Not a amount, but a decent amount. Um, whereas I, our offensive line is so fucking bad, and we're trying to develop a young quarterback. And that man needs to be protected because, holy shit, we're so bad at doing it. Yeah, like it, it's one of those things where this is a historic offensive line class and a historic wide receiver class. <clears throat> the wide receiver is historic because of how deep it is. The tackle class is historic because of how top-heavy it is. And when you have you know, a top 11 pick, you can get any one of the top four guys which could be your left tackle for the next 15 years, you can still get a round one value wide receiver at the top of the second round. I mean, you're not going to get a Judy, uh, a Lamb, a Ruggs, but you could get a guy like T. Higgins, get a guy like Justin uh, Jefferson, uh, KJ Hamler. Like, There's a lot of guys you can get at the top of the second round that are going to be your wide receiver one. And I do think left tackle is more important. I don't think Kelvin Beecham is going to be able to be that guy. No. No, 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 no. <laughs> yeah. I I like Kelvin Beecham. He was a sealer for a long time uh and will always have that, but I definitely think uh uh it should be offensive tackle than wide receiver. Agreed. Um, Unless all four guys are gone by pick 11, I think they should stick with that. Which I, which I, which I doubt. Oh, fuck. I was going to say something. What the fuck was I going to say? God damn it. Oh, I'm good for this at least once an episode. Fuck me. What was the topic? Let's find this. I want to say it was football, but I don't remember what it was about. <laughs> uh, so it was like off the topic of the draft, combine, stuff we were talking about earlier, Andy Dalton, Tom Brady, Philip Rivers. Oh. Fuck me, man. I, I, no, man. It's gone. I can't think of that shit. Bitch. Oh, god damn it. It was an interesting talking call correctly. <laughs> I have no idea what it was, oh, but it was. I remember good. what it was. Yes. Um, uh, so Jerry Judy, 
got like was like had like a Twitter controversy for one day. Did you see it? Uh, what was this? When he showed up to a press conference wearing a star necklace. Oh, Jerry and, Judy, yeah. Yeah, and it, people were like, "Why are you wearing that?" And he goes, "Oh, well, like my last name's Judy. A lot of people call me Jew, and so I decided to get this Jewish star necklace because people call me Jew." <laughs> and people f- found that offensive. Yeah. And to, I don't get it. Because <laughs> to one degree, I it's think like. It's I get why some people might find it offensive. I also don't get why most people would find that offensive. Like, people who aren't religious wear crosses literally all the time. Yeah. And, like, also speaking as a Jewish person, um, yeah. the dude, it's not like he, he was like, I hate Jews and I wear this to remind myself how much I hate. Like, he was like, Leaning into, like, it was, like, a funny thing. Mm-hmm. He's wearing it in good nature. You know, plus, like, it's representation for that doesn't get a ton of representation in the sports community. Like, and he seemed like he was having fun with it. Like, I, I, and from all the circles I find on Jewish Twitter, like, I didn't see a single person who was, like, upset about this. In fact, everyone was leaning into the whole, nah, man, you have my express written permission. Like, <laughs> like that, that makes me want to draft him. <laughs> it's one of those things where like i don't know if this will surprise you but you are in fact not my only jewish friend i'm not surprised by that <laughs> um and everyone who i knew who had you know was active in the jewish faith i've been like do you give a shit about jerry judy and every one of them was like who fucking cares like this yeah. is so low on the list of things we care about both in everyday life and like as a Jewish person who gives a shit that yep yep I in fact I go beyond who gives a shit to say I actively love this I think it's hilarious yeah like this is one of those things where it's like people are upset just to be upset even though they should be celebrating well maybe not celebrating but supporting it at least yeah it's, it definitely has the feel I'm a draft analyst with nothing going on Will this lead to locker room issues? Let's talk about that. And you're just in bad. Yeah, all four people in the NFL who are Jewish are going to freak out about this. <laughs> yeah, oh no. Not going to well. Can you name a Jewish player off the top of your head? In the NFL? Yeah. Josh Rosen. Re- oh, yeah. Can you name a second player? No. <laughs> yeah, I can't, I can't name a single one other than Josh Rosen. And even that I couldn't get off the top of my head. Yeah, that's that's really all I got. I'm going to Google Jewish NFL players, and I feel like that's going to be something that's going to be stuck in my search history forever. Yeah, I'm cur- I'm doing it right now. And it's hot. <laughs> um, let me tell you. There's a Wikipedia page called List of Jews in Sports. And oh, that Julian Edelman technically so has some, um, some Jewish background. Although. Oh, uh, Mitch Schwartz. Don't know who that is. Uh, right tackle for the Chiefs. Uh, honestly, probably the best offensive tackle in the league right now. Yeah, Jew gang. Um, Josh Rosen. <laughs> uh, Ali Marpet, uh, good center for the Buccaneers. Julian Edelman is Jewish. Yeah, he 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 has some Jewish background. He's never like practiced or been bar mitzvah. But I saw a whole video where like he went to Israel to like learn more about that side of his heritage. Um, mm-hmm. So he is he is he is um ethnically Jewish. Yeah, that's pretty much uh that's it for active players that are names anyone I need really. to look up. I need to look up a man who played from 19th 19- Charles Buckets Goldenberg. Oh, I see that here. He played guard and running back and was an all pro what? I yeah, I needed to learn more about this man. Packers Charles Buckets Goldenberg. Oh, oh Sid Luckman God. was Jewish. Oh, way to go. He's Luckman, member of the tribe. Uh Buckets Goldenberg has one pro time NFL champ and is not in the Hall of Fame and is from Ukraine. Good for him. Love him. Uh, there's a guy here who's in the college football hall of fame named Merv Pregolman. Oh, no, that's a great Jewish name. That is a fantastic Jewish name. 
Yeah, so it's really Mitch Schwartz, Josh Murray, or Josh Rosen. Um, what else did we have to talk about today? Um, we I wanted to talk about whether or not the Bears being interested in Andy Dalton was notable. Yeah, let's close on this. Um, I I understand it. it you, know, you know what this feels like? It feels like when they drafted Mitch Trubisky and also signed Mike Glennon. Yes. And we're going to have like a little ca- like like um competition, QB competition to see who actually got the starting job and then Mike Lennon was so bad that Mitchell Trubisky took over and did okay. Uh and this feels like that but going in reverse. Like Mitchell Trubisky is not doing great and they'll bring in Andy Dalton and have a QB competition and then probably let um Mitch Trubisky start the season regardless of how it goes. But then if it's bad, bring in Andy Dalton. Yeah, I it's just of all the things you could be doing to fix your QB position, I just I just am so uninspired by picking Andy Dalton. It's it's not graceful. It's not graceful. It's it's the opposite of graceful. And it's it's almost it's almost going backwards, you know? Oh, it's definitely going backwards. It's uh. But at the same time, like I get it. Like, are you going to bring in forty-five-year-old Philip Rivers? I mean, they they could for like a season, yeah. but like they, it's not a great look. If they think they can compete right now with Philip Rivers and go for a championship, sure. I just I don't think they're in that position right now. Uh, you know what? No. If they brought in a good quarterback like Tom Brady or Philip Rivers, I think they could compete with that defense for a Super Bowl. I would actually kind but of that would have to, see them to mean that they are admitting that Mitchell Trubisky is a failure and they're moving on. And That's I don't a good point. think that front office or coaching staff is willing to do that. That's a good point. Either one of those dudes would signal we have officially have zero confidence in in uh, in Mitch Trubisky. You're right. All right. Anything else you want to talk about today? No, man. I think I'm good. All right. Close this out. All right. Well, if you want to follow the show on Twitter, you can do so at Juicing Pod. And if you want to hit us up via email, you can do so at juicingthenumbers at gmail.com. And until Thursday, y'all have a good one. Bye.